All right, hey guys, uh, tonight we're looking at another uh, viewer submission. So this is the Pattern 84 chest rig that uh, Commando Store did a pre-order for and finally shipped. So uh, there have been some minor modifications done by the, the viewer. Uh, those will be pretty easy to acknowledge and we'll uh, look past or beyond those as we go over what this chest rig has to offer. All right, so we'll get it on the table and uh, go through it because there's a lot going on here, all right? Hey guys, I am so sorry. I totally forgot to cover this. So to make sure you see it, I'm gonna put it in the front of the video, uh, which is gonna make this wording a bunch of nonsense. But uh, there's also a, uh, a dangler pocket uh, under this central flap, which uh, I should have called out because I had to pull the dangler out of there. Uh, so I'm extra dumb today. It is a rather aggressive fit. So the gentleman that sent it had a, uh, a spiritus sack in there uh and it was he was able to sink it to the full height and uh it's it's pretty pretty narrow in its cut so it was a struggle to get the dangler out like you're not gonna have any issues with that uh maintaining uh itself in there and i like the way it's done under the mag flap so it keeps the back of this uh slick you don't have any velcro nonsense going on back there very snug fit if you had mags in there the thing is going absolutely nowhere uh, and it keeps that connection up on the front panel of this so uh, that piece i i feel really bad that i missed it the first time because it is that piece is well done uh, I, I do appreciate that as well it's a really smart way of doing that um, and then there's enough velcro here that if you don't have a dangler your mag pouches are tight um, so good on them for that and and i apologize for the goofy order on this video all right, hey guys, so uh, Commando Store, uh, it's Commando with a K if you're not familiar, uh, Pattern 84 chest rig. Dude that sent this to me pre-ordered it uh, a hot minute ago and uh, told me that he had done so and he wanted to send it to me and uh, I kind of lost track of it. So I don't know exactly how long ago pre-order took place. Uh, on the website, they're listed for $230 and... Uh, he just recently got it and then sent it to me. So he's clearly used it a little bit. Uh, it came configured. Uh, it's got some dirt on it and uh, it's got um, some modifications made. So dude has run it through its paces at least a little bit and it doesn't look any worse for wear uh, in my opinion. All right, so uh, it is based off of the uh, Pattern 84 chest rig, I believe from South Africa. Uh, I could be wildly wrong on that. But I think that's what it is, and obviously it's got some some modern spin to it. So uh, as we go through here, I'll do my best to point out uh, features. Uh, however, I don't have a ton of time with this, and I, you know, it, it had it had everything still in it. So I want to get this back to the dude as quick as possible. Uh, so up front, you've got three uh, double M4 uh, mag pouches, right, with uh, pretty hardy lids. A uh, decent amount of uh, Velcro contact there. The elastic webbing. Uh, these are very similar to the old Eagle pouches. Uh, however, they have internal dividers in them uh, to keep your magazines separate. I'm not huge on that needing to be a feature. Granted, it's been a while since I've used a lot of double mag pouches. Uh, but if the lid does its job, the, the divider is not really needed. Uh, it's a little extra bulk, a little extra cost. Um, I don't know, take it or leave it, right? Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Uh, it is interesting, kind of the, the way the body of this is assembled. The uh, the flaps are sewn, you know, clearly inch, inch and a half-ish down from the top of the body of the chest rig. Um, so that's, in my opinion, uh, since it kind of runs all the way across, bulk that didn't need to be there, right? Uh, you could You could easily work these into the top seam or, or right at the top seam, and I don't think that that was really a needed feature. Uh, I think the flaps are a little bit of overkill as well, with it being the, the folded Cordura, uh, going the full three inches across the pouches. That's rather nitpicky. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything, uh, but I, th I think the lids could have been done a little bit cleaner, and and you could save some, some general bulk in this area. All right, 
Uh, that said, they, they fit M4 mags well. Um, I can show you right here. So, you know, one, one M4 mag and two M4 mags. Granted, I got the, the base plates on those, but still enough lid. Uh, without those, it should line up pretty nicely. So it's almost like they knew uh, what mags they wanted to fit and, and built the pockets around that, uh, as they should. Yep. <clears throat> Okay, so that's the uh, the center three pockets there. Off on the shooter's right is a flapped uh, pistol mag or multi-tool pocket. A uh, gentleman that sent this to me had a Gerber in there and it fit quite nicely. Uh, so that's flapped. Again, I think the flap is overkill. Uh, not the presence of the flap, just the way they did it. And then there's a uh, pocket on the shooter's left that is uncovered. I believe in the picture on the website, there's like a, an ACOG lens pen in there. Um, we, we use them a lot for night vision goggles. So if you've got one, that's a good spot for it, I guess. Um, it's a little big for a pen and a little small for just about anything else. But um, chapstick would fit in there. Not that that's what you need front and center, but it would fit pretty well. All right, so we'll get those closed up and out of the way. And then uh, we've got a pouch on each side of, of the center three that is rather identical. Um, these are what, what I would believe are radio pouches. And looking at the modifications uh, that this gentleman's put on here, so he's got a an added uh, three quarter inch center release buckle on a Velcro mount here. And I would assume that what he does is tuck the flap in and then he's got this uh, shot cord origami going on up here with the uh, other side of the buckle and i think that's what he uses to retain his radio and the reason i say that is one it looks like how most radio pouches are set up uh, but two in spite of a 152 width wise fitting in this pocket the lid is nowhere near long enough uh, you can see we're not gonna have any contact there and it's really not even long enough for a, uh, a commercial Motorola. You'll, you'll get some contact there, but that's, you know, without anything in the way up top. Uh, so as soon as you put an antenna on there, you got to kind of bend that around. And if these were purpose-built radio pockets, uh, they are not well done. Bowfangs would fit in there, but they're wildly too loose for bowfangs. Um, Two M4 mags may fit in there fairly well. Let's see, some standard M4 mags here. And that'll, I think that would fit, but you can see it's a, it's a shorter pocket. So it's not good Velcro contact there. And I don't know, you know, if those are, maybe, maybe they really wanted to keep it true to its origins as much as possible. Uh, so they could potentially get a pass for that, but purpose-built radio pockets, not great. And then uh, we'll go over to this side so you can see it a little bit better. Your elastic uh, routing starts right on top of these pockets. So this is sewn in here. It kind of looks like it would pull through, but it, it does not. Um, so that is sewn in there, and you've got two little elastic loops there. Uh, and that kind of continues up the harness, but we'll get into that in a minute. All right, so, and then on the outside of each of these radio pockets, you have two columns of laser cut molly. Uh, and it's cut in the style that you can use every, you know, every row as needed. So, you, so it's not like the old uh, Blue Force Gear square cutouts. Uh, you, can, you can stagger things in one inch increments. You're not committed anywhere in between there. All right, <clears throat> uh, so that's on, on both sides. Uh, this side, you can see he's got a grenade pocket and a flashbang pocket, which has his strobe and compass. Not that that really matters. So, you know, shorter pockets you could you could stack on there, and he could even get a, a pistol mag in there if he wanted to, uh, but he did not. Right. Uh, so two two columns of laser cut molly. Right. On the back side, you've got some mesh uh, that's not gonna do a whole lot of meshy things for you. 
Uh, it's really just the backer to this uh, because they've got the, the binding tape or bias tape around it, so they can get away with that. Uh, you do have a pretty generous um, map pocket here, which is not going to be the most easy thing to access uh, because it's you know a, a good ways down the back panel. Uh, a, a pull tab or something here, or even just, I, I really think you could have gotten away with leaving this open top uh, just fine. Uh, pretty minimal Velcro there, which I appreciate because it's already going to be kind of a hassle to get to. Uh, but it's it's a, a decent size hardy pocket. Uh, he had his like leader book and map and everything in there and, and it fit all right. I, I messed up refolding his map, but that was in there and totally secured. And, yeah, I, I, I put this back in here in a, a way that it wasn't before, but it'll fit a sideways uh, right in the rain notebook without any issues. That all fit in there. It was clean. I almost didn't notice it at first, uh, so it's in there. Uh, you can see on the label here, uh, you know, Commando Store P84 made in the USA. Uh, so that's a win. All right. uh, quality seems perfectly adequate. Uh, it definitely has kind of that... Um, that massive uh, sew house feel to it, right? Where it's it's not a a first spear or tier OEM type feel. And I'm I'm gonna look really dumb if they come out and say that it was one of those two. Uh, but it definitely has that feel of like made in America, but by a a sew shop that doesn't necessarily do tech gear all the time. Right? <clears throat> you guys know what I'm talking about. You're all smart folks. All right, and then looking at the harness, again, he has modified this. Uh, he put some webbing on here to make it an H harness uh, because he's a smart guy and H harness is the way. Uh, but out of the box, it's set up to be a X harness, uh, which I think is a mistake on a chest rig this hardy. Uh, it's it's fairly heavy empty because uh, it's all a thousand denier. And uh, X harness is just a mistake on that. It should have been an H harness from the get go. Uh, which he fixed. That said, the straps are quite nice. Uh, they are wide and they have a, a, a little bit of padding in them, nothing excessive. Uh, you can see there's some real padding there. It's no like no mesh binding tape uh, tomfoolery, right? There's actual foam in there. Um, and then you've got a, a small portion of horizontal pass-through and then the rest of this is all sewn down and then elastic uh, coming off of this every so often. The elastic is not not very very large uh, so if you're putting like a hydration tube in here you're gonna kind of you're gonna wear it out a little bit prematurely. They could have gone with a little bit bigger, bigger loop on here it still would have held comms fine and then it would have allowed for hydration but there's no uh, back panel or integration with a backpack so running your hydration through these uh, would then marry a, a non-married backpack to it. So it might get kind of awkward. Uh, the straps are attached with a ladder lock here, and then you can police up the webbing there. I don't know if he added that one wrap. I suspect he added that one wrap on there. Um, so it seems like there's a, a, a good bit of excess strap if you're a very large fellow. Um, this is a big chest rig, and, and it's got hardy straps on it so i can't imagine you would need to get into this webbing very much at all uh which small design flaw right like being honest about what size human is going to wear this um <clears throat> looking at the uh the rest of the straps so the back strap is uh purely webbing with a one inch buckle on it uh kind of interesting the way it married into the uh, laser cut portion here so they laser cut a tab and then bar tacked the or box stitched the back strap to that uh, tab so they didn't have to mess with their their bias tape and, and webbing i think that's smartly done uh there's this kind of like natural void here uh so they didn't have to dodge this thing going around the corner they could do the corner and it would fit in cleanly and the rest of this would all be sewn down i know that's really nerdy um, but I hadn't, I hadn't fully appreciated that the first time I looked at it. I think these laser cut panels are really well done, actually. Uh, that is, that is smart construction to save them some work there. Good job, Commando Store, if you guys design this thing in-house. I like it. That's smart. Um, and then sewing the webbing to there. So in a, in an, 
this is actually, you know, there's a there's another another level of that being smart here. So, um, if for whatever reason these straps broke on you, uh, maybe not field repairable, but easily repairable because you don't have to pop any binding uh, to get this side strap fixed. You can you can just un, you know pop those stitches and sew another another strip of webbing on there. Nice, that's smart. Sorry, nerded out on that a little bit there. Um, looking at the back of the straps, you know, these are these are fixed. And then uh, through another ladder lock or tri-glide, whatever that is, on the back. Um, so in theory, you could disconnect down here, disconnect up here, and you could replace this with whatever padded section you wanted. Uh, so I don't hate that. That's kind of neat. You could even work in an H harness still and fix that mistake. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's pretty well done. Uh, it feels very similar to the, uh, the ghost chest rig in its, uh, construction. And I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings with that comment. I don't know whose feelings, uh, but it, it definitely has that flavor to it where it was not sewn by somebody that does this every day. Um, and the lids, the lids are also... Uh, a testament to that they are they are very entry level lids uh <clears throat> for whoever's sewing prowess this is but i do like the the chest rig i think it's a i think it's an interesting arrangement um these pockets on the sides here not not totally sold on the configuration there these radio pockets are a miss for sure um i almost feel like you would have been better served with just four columns of laser cut um and then the center mags then you'd be getting something very very similar to what what exists out there already that'd be pretty close to the onward rig um a lot of the older tactical tailor eagle rigs uh nothing in here hasn't been done before right but if you like p84 chest rigs and you want to get something close to it i don't think this is a bad option i think the price is fairly fairly appropriate considering you're getting five fixed pouches, really seven fixed pouches, decent straps, and a full full size chest rig. That's not bad. I don't hate it. Things I, things I would do differently, but hopefully if you guys were looking at this, you learned something about it. Um, hopefully if you weren't looking at this, you appreciated me nerding out on some laser cutting that I think is really well done. Uh, otherwise, uh, hopefully... I helped you guys fall asleep if that was your goal, which is totally fine if it is. So thanks for your time. Appreciate it, guys.